Do you want to sleep like Sleeping Beauty? Well, you could start with a rose. Or you could just do good sleep hygiene. So let's talk about that. I'm going to wake up now. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, and sleep is a major component of rest. If you don't rest, you don't heal. I don't care what your problem is. And if you don't sleep, your body can't recover, whether you're recovering from a workout or whether you're recovering from life. Rest and sleep is important. So let's talk about some basics of sleep hygiene. Number one, get away from the computer. Get away from the phone. I know you're enjoying my video, but if it is within an hour of your bedtime, pause me and pick it back up tomorrow, and I will fire you up tomorrow morning. But right now, uh, I don't want you to get fired up. So TV's off, computer's off, cell phone's off for at least an hour before bed. Yeah, at least an hour. If you have one of those blue light monitors on your phone, put on the blue light filter. If you're really having problems uh, falling to sleep, you may want to get those blue glasses as well. If you're having problems falling asleep, you have to also think about um, preparing yourself with a nice nighttime ritual, all right? And that starts a half hour to an hour before, maybe reading a little bit, maybe having a cup of chamomile or tea or herbal tea, nothing caffeinated, no alcohol before bed. Alcohol actually ends up being a stimulant uh, beyond one or two, uh, uh, a drink, beyond one drink, it becomes a stimulant. So we want to avoid that, all right? And no big meals before bed. It might put you to sleep right away, but once that gets digested, it will actually stimulate your body. And we also recommend you stay away from B vitamins at bedtime. They can also stimulate a lot of vivid thoughts. Are you a caffeine person? It may be a problem affecting your sweet quality. It may not be, but for safeness and for thoroughness, Keep the caffeine away from bedtime. Have it earlier in the day. Have it in the morning if you do have it. One, two cups should not be a problem. Uh, green tea, not enough caffeine to be clinically significant, so don't worry about it. Exercise before bed, something like stretching, yoga, mindfulness, all good stuff. Cardio, not right before bed. Weight training, not right before bed. Give yourself a couple of hours after that type of a workout to get to bed and to have quality sleep. That's not to say if you work out, you may not pass right out because it was a hard workout. We want you not only get to sleep, we want you to stay asleep. When you wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back to sleep, that's called intentional insomnia, where you just can't fall back asleep. That's a whole different area. That's where your mind's usually racing and you got things that are just going on, going on. There we have to get you into a deep sleep. How do we do that? Well, a good way to start is with melatonin. That can also work well to get into a nice deep sleep. Only 15% of people are melatonin deficient. So if it doesn't work for you, don't be surprised. Sometimes we have to look at your cortisol levels. That's your fight and flight hormone. That hormone's got to be high in the morning and low at night. So there's lots of herbs we take to manage cortisol uh, levels. And sometimes we'll need to add those in to make sure your cortisol level is low at night. So your melatonin comes on, whether you take it as a supplement or naturally, and then you have a good sleep cycle. Again, making sure there's not uh, more than uh, one drink, a lot of alcohol, a lot of food in your stomach will help you sleep through the night. A cool room is better than a warm room, so keep the room cool. White noise can go either way. Most people find white noise soothing. Some people find it's too much. They need no noise. And guess what? A dark room. Make it dark. Get rid of the lights. When do you want the lights? In the morning when you wake up. So cool, quiet, dark room, all important for sleep hygiene. Now, if you're a parent, you have young children, you're not gonna sleep very well for probably about 21 years. And that's what it's like being a parent, and that's okay. But you need to get as good quality of sleep as you can, which means in the morning, you wanna feel rested. And if in the middle of the day you're doing some light math, checking your bank account and reconciling it, uh, 
doing some light paperwork, you shouldn't be falling asleep in it. You shouldn't be falling asleep while in the middle of the day while driving your car from the sun blaring at you. That means you're not getting good sleep quality. Are you snoring? Could you have sleep apnea? Well, ask your, your spouse. Maybe they know. But if you're not getting good sleep breathing habits, that's going to impact your sleep as well. You may not know that. So someone else is going to have to tell you about that or go get a sleep study test. That's the way to figure that out. You have all these apps. Uh, that tell you what your sleep quality is. It's a good baseline. It tells you how much you move for sure. It doesn't tell you about your respiratory rate necessarily, and that's essential to have your respiratory rate and your heart rate coupled to be have them go to the same. That means you're getting good quality sleep, um, but it gives you an idea of how much you're getting. If you exercise on a regular basis and you notice your resting heart rate is raising in the morning, guess what? You're not getting enough sleep, you're overtraining, you're fatigued, you're not recovering. So that's a great biomarker of uh, ineffective sleep and overtraining. So there's a lot that can be done for sleep. It starts with an appropriate assessment and diagnosis. I gave you things to think about. If you have questions, ask me. All right, you're watching this probably because you're a patient in our office. So give me a uh, a tap on the shoulder and say, hey doc, I have some questions about my sleep quality. Falling asleep and staying asleep because we have a whole combination of supplements that we generally stack on one another based on your symptoms, your lifestyle to get you to fall asleep quickly and to stay asleep and wake up rested. And it could be something as simple as magnesium, it could be something more involved like stacking herbals and CBD. So that's where my clinical experience comes in. If you're not one of my patients, you can always call me for a remote consult telehealth as well. So smell the roses before you go to sleep. That's what's gonna get you to sleep. And to stay asleep, you might have a bite of that apple. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, thanks for tuning in.